Good happy Wednesday morning, September 18, 2019. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, Lundusky testifies. He didn't think President asked me to do anything illegal. Former Trump campaign manager, current Windham resident, gives testimony. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. Smelly water is new. It can be more serious than just the smell. At Capital Well Clean Water Center, we get the ew out of the water and make it. Corey Lewandowski frustrated Democrats asking for more information on possible obstruction of justice outlined in the Mueller report, including that the president twice asked him to urge former Attorney General Jeff Sessions to limit the Russia inquiry. The White House is directing Mr. Lewandowski not to provide information about such communications beyond yes. the information provided in the portion of the report. I'll take that as a yes. Lewandowski insisted he did not deliver that message to Sessions. Why did it take you so long and you never even delivered it? Correct. I never delivered the message. Yeah, you chickened out. I went on vacation. You went on vacation. <laughs> Democrats and Lewandowski clashed for hours. I've been asked by the White House to, Congressman, I'd be happy to answer your question, or you can just have a conversation by yourself. But if you'd like to ask me a question, I'll be happy to answer. I'm going to continue. The reason is because don't ask me a question if you want to hear my answer. This is a House judiciary, not a House party. Republicans called the hearing and the questioning a waste of time. We could talk today about your favorite football team. I'm not sure. Patriots. Patriots. You're pretty happy right now, right? Tom's a winner. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. New Hampshire files new complaint against owners of Purdue Farmer. Lawsuit says Shackle family played a major role in fueling opiate crisis. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. Strict attention to detail. That's what sets Kubota construction equipment apart. It's how we met. The state of New Hampshire is suing the Sackler family, the founders and controllers of Purdue Pharma, saying they aggressively marketed opioid products. They were very aggressively um, uh, telling people that these drugs were safe and effective and not addictive for chronic pain users. And while doing that, Assistant Attorney General Jim Buffetti says they increased the sales of their opioids, amassing a massive fortune off the profits. They drained the company of resources to benefit themselves, and, uh, and now the company has filed bankruptcy. So we think that's wrong, we think that's unfair, and we think that the people who helped to create this crisis should be held responsible. The bankruptcy filing comes just days after more than 20 states rejected a multi-billion dollar settlement from the company for its role in the opioid crisis. But some states accepted the deal, which officials here in New Hampshire say does not go far enough. It doesn't provide enough resources for, uh, for, the, for the states to be able to abate the crisis that they helped create. So we, along with 25 other states, said no to that deal. Buffetti says he has been communicating with other state attorney generals as this case moves forward. Certainly we need to stand tough and to say this is, this, and tell a bankruptcy judge, this isn't, this isn't right, this isn't fair, and this has to be better than what it is. 
Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Trial begins for man accused of sexually assaulting, killing two-year-old daughter. Girl's mother testifies about learning daughter was dead. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Andy Hirschberger. Smelly water is ew. It can be more serious than just the smell. At Capital Well Clean Water Center, we get the ew out of the water and make it. <sighs> Ashley Borg says she was at work on November 27, 2016, when she got a call from her mother that her two and a half year old daughter was dead. Mom had Madison. I grabbed her and I tried to make. I tried to make. Like, Madison responded to me, and she was just lifeless. Her arms were just limp. Her head was just like this. Her eyes were glazed over. She had cuts and bruises all over herself. Roger Dana, the child's father and Bork's boyfriend at the time, is on trial for first-degree murder. Prosecutors say he beat and sexually assaulted the toddler, telling police that the child had simply fallen from a bunk bed. It was awful. She... <laughs> Her face was, her face and head was more bruises and injuries than anything. Prosecutors say Dana killed the child out of anger and frustration. But defense lawyers say there were plenty of other people in and out of Dana's apartment the day the child died. The police gathered dozens of pieces of evidence they never tested and selectively chose Dana as a suspect from the start of the case. He was totally unfit to be a father. His behavior was unacceptable. But this is not a trial about whether or not he was fit to be a parent. It's a trial about one of the most serious crimes a person can be accused of. If convicted of first-degree murder, Dana will spend the rest of his life in prison without the possibility of parole. Reporting live, I'm Andy Hershberger, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Trailblazing journalist Roberts was well acquainted with New Hampshire primary. Cokie Roberts, known for insightful interviews of political figures. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Adam Sexton. Mrs. Smith, we got your water test results back. Oh, good. Yeah, so your arsenic levels are really high. Jen and Cokie Roberts was well acquainted with the first in the nation primary and it was always a privilege whenever she came to WMUR to visit us in the studios or for various primary debates or campaign coverage through the years. Candidates for president might think... I think New Hampshire uh, has been a very interesting phenomenon to watch over the decades. And Cokie Roberts didn't just observe. During her long and distinguished career, she reported and provided keen perspective on the first in the nation primary. In the olden days, you'd come up and it was a lone candidate wandering into coffee shops and, and talking to individual voters. Now it tends to be uh, a huge staff and hordes of cameras. Roberts passed away Tuesday due to complications from breast cancer. She was a pioneering correspondent on Capitol Hill at a time when women were still breaking through the glass ceiling in Washington newsrooms. It was essentially reporting and then writing very brief little stories, and I loved it. Even today, there are presidential candidates like Bill Weld who recall her prowess in drilling down to what mattered on the Sunday morning political shows. Yeah, I remember one Sunday morning I was on 
Koki in a panel, and the other guest was Mario Cuomo. And Mario and I did uh, all but a two-step routine with Kane and Boder, you know, but she, she drew it out of us with very good humor. She is a great, very classy interview always. And tributes are pouring in from New Hampshire all the way to a illustrious list of former presidents, including George W. Bush and President Obama. Obama calling her a role model for all Washington journalists. Reporting live in the newsroom, Adam Sexton, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And our thoughts and prayers go to his, her family, friends, and co-workers. Today at the Manchester Boston Regional Airport, they will be conducting an emergency drill. Airport operations to continue as normal. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Smelly water is new. It can be more serious than just the smell. At Capital Well Clean Water Center, we get the ew out of the water and make it. An emergency drill will take place tomorrow at Manchester Boston Regional Airport. 75 different agencies and about 80 volunteers will take part. The three-hour exercise will involve the use of a mock aircraft. The airport will remain open and operations will not be affected. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. U.S. features point to slightly lower opens. U.S. stocks were set to open slightly lower Wednesday morning. Oklahoma teen accused of threatening to gun down students at high school. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. The teenage girl accused of a disturbing high school shooting plot threatening to, quote, shoot 400 people for fun. Allegedly showing a co-worker a video of herself shooting an 8K47, that co-worker alarmed by the video, then telling their boss... And when police visited the girl's home, they found an AK-47, a shotgun, and ammunition. Tonight, she's now under arrest, and here's ABC's Steve Osinsami. Oklahoma authorities tonight say that this young woman, seen here in Jailhouse Orange, is accused of threatening to gun down students at her old high school in McAllister, Oklahoma. 18-year-old Alexis Wilson dropped out of the school when she was in the ninth grade, and investigators say she was planning to return and was, quote, going to shoot 400 people for fun. I'm elated that uh, right now that, that the threat has been eliminated. When police searched her home, they found these, a newly purchased AK-47, six magazines to go with, and a 12-gauge shotgun. Her co-workers at this pizza place were the ones who called authorities. Police say she shared with another waitress pictures and videos of herself shooting with the assault rifle. We do not want any of our schools getting shot up, as nobody does. And so we're going to do, you know, everything that we can to prevent this. She is pleading not guilty. And when she was arrested, police say she told them she really wasn't serious. But they also say she told them that she used to be suicidal and borderline homicidal to the people of McAllister High School because she was bullied. And Steve Osinsami with us live tonight. And Steve, you're now learning tonight of yet another arrest of a high school student threatening to, quote, shoot up a school. Yes, David, a 16-year-old from Fresno High School in California is under arrest tonight after a post he made to Instagram. Over the weekend, three other California teenagers were arrested for something similar. In each of these cases, people called in information to police because they were concerned. David, which they need to keep doing. All right, Steve, thank you. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great 
rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Good night and good goodbye, and see you later on today.